Hello everybody, hope you are doing well. Welcome to Economic and Research channel. I'm Dr. Abdul Hatsinachki and I'm so happy to share with you some of the tips and knowledge about time series that analysis using EVUs particularly we are going to discuss about Johansson co-integration using the VAR and VECM model. So, as you know, there is many ways and tests on how to analyze your time series data. And this also will be based on the nature of the data that you have. Choosing the right test or the right method is very important to your research because if you have chosen the wrong or an appropriate method or test, therefore your result may be biased. So I have summarized four different types of methods in this table where you may need them to analyze your time series data. So the first case where we have all of our data or series are contigrate stationary at level. Means that all the series are I0. In this case, we can simply model the data in the level using or less estimation. And we may have also all the series are integrated of the same order I1 but they are not co-integrated means they don't have a long run relationship in this case we can just difference each series and estimate a standard regression model using OLS but if our series were all integrated and stationary of the same order of I1 and they are co-integrated then in this case we can use Johansson co-integration test to establish both the long run and the short run relationship between the variables. By having all your variables stationary at the same order of I1 could be challenging and in some cases could be impossible. So what if your series are mixed between I0 and I1? In this case, ARDL came to the picture or the autoregressive distribution lag. So autoregressive distribution lag, ARDL, works where some of the variables or series in question may be stationary at I0, some may be at I1 or even fractionally integrated and they also should be co-integration among some of the variables. But there are some cases where you may have one of the variable or two of the variable or more which are stationary at the second difference. In this case, you may have a mix between I0 and I1 and I2 or between I1 and I2 or between I0 and I2 so, in this case, neither Johansson co-integration nor ARDR can be used because they don't allow or they don't work where one of the series is stationary at I2. Therefore, TYDL test here could be the most appropriate method to analyze your data. So, TYDL allows you to find a co-integration or a long-run relationship uh, between the variables whether your series are stationary at uh, level I0 or first difference I1 or second difference I2. So today we are going to focus more on Johansson co-integration and before we start I would like to give you some 
of the information. The first one, if all series are stationary in the first difference means I1, then we assume that they are cointegrated and we establish a long run relationship between the variables. So, you, mostly in literature, there is two prominent cointegration tests for I1 series, which are uh, Inger Granger cointegration test and Johansen cointegration test. So, the focus today will be mostly on Johansen cointegration test. Third, you should know that the, the null hypothesis is H0, no cointegrating equation. H1, there is cointegrating equation. Also, make sure that cointegration test should be performed on the level form of the variables and not on the first difference you may uh, uh, on the first difference you you could make maybe the look look, look transformation to your data so what are the steps that we need to, to to follow the first one we have to make sure that all our variables are stationary at i1 not i0 not i2 second we should find the leg length criteria third we should check the cointegration and we have to establish the cointegration so if there is no cointegration, we just get through the var, but not the VECM. If we establish the cointegration, then we can do the var and VECM. So after confirming that there is a cointegration, we go and calculate the VECM or estimate the VECM. After that, we should find the short run causality and find the causality between dependent variable and independent variable. Now let's go to the if use and do some demonstration. Okay, so I go file, new book file. So I use time series annual from 1971. Seventy one to two thousand fourteen. I import my data file, import file. So I have two series, which is GDP per capita and <coughs> sorry, electricity consumption kilowatt per hour per capita also so uh, before I start I would like to use the log logarithm so I will generate the data ln GDP equal to log GDP and ln EC equal log Easy. So let's assume that I want to find the relationship between electricity consumption and economic growth. And if electricity consumption causes economic growth or uh, GDP per capita or GDP per capita cause electricity consumption. So the first thing in order to use uh, Johansson cointegration, I have to make sure that my data is integrated on the first order or stationary at the first difference so i will click on electricity view unit test level i choose intercept or maybe if you want to see if the trend yeah significant 
you know with the trend so you can uh, use here but it is not stationary so let's see in the first difference not significant trend so I will use only constant intercept yes so <coughs> it is stationary at I1 not I0 let's go now GDP and again level I choose the trend and intercept not significant and also with trend not significant so you know test first level with trend significant and here trend is not significant so it will be without trend so I will just choose intercept significant so both the series are I1 or integrated in the first order or stationary at first level or first difference so here I confirm that I can use now Johansson co-integration test now the second step is I need to find the leg length criteria so uh, I click on the series open as var then uh, I keep it is like that I put OK, then view, leg, leg structure and leg length criteria. Now let's put 8, maybe. And let me see what is so the most powerful and famous tells are uh, this. AIC or Archaic Information Criterion and SC or Schwartz Information Criterion. So based on these two and also even others, the leg is one. So let's say assume for example, it comes more than, than one. Let's say one, two, three, four. And we want to know which of those are significant. So we do again view leg structure, then we put leg exclusion test. And here you can see the, the leg number one significant, leg number two is not significant. So it is only leg number one. So now we confirm the leg. I close it. So now uh, we go and uh, confirm the co integration. If there is no co-integration, therefore, we are not going uh, to uh, test the VECM, but we stop on the VAR only. So we have to see the co-integration. So uh, again, we select the, <coughs> let's say uh, we take GDP as dependent variable, followed by uh, EC as an independent. So how EC affect GDP? Right click, open as, group, then I put view integration test Johansson here like we already found it is only number one and here the series we found it also only on trend there is no uh, sorry only on intercept there is no trend so I choose number three then I click OK and see the result okay the null hypo the null hypothesis we say H0 is there is no co-integration. So since the nine here, which is significant, and it's read like p-value is less than 0 0.05, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. There is no co-integration, and we accept the H1 where there is co-integration. So based on the trace statistic, there is a co-integration. Now let's go and see the the max agent statistic. Based on my statistic, at 5%, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Therefore, we have to accept the null hypothesis where it says that there is no co-integration. So sometimes uh, this 
cases when happen is one test show there is integration, another show no, no integration. So which one you are going to choose is uh, based on the researcher. Uh, if you have a strong justification, you can justify that you be based on the you know a trace test, then you confirm that there is integration. For me, even I can say that based on the max agent. There is integration at 10% because the p probability of p value is less than 0 0.1. 0 0.07 is less than 0 0.1. So, therefore, I will assume that there is co integration. Then, after I confirm that there is co integration, I will go and calculate the VECM. So, again, maybe we keep this here. I go to the group again. Right click, open as, va, here right, then I choose here VECM and here choose 1 because we found the leg is 1, right? 1, 1, and put OK. And here we can see that the EC has a negative sign, but in Johan's uh, uh, test, if it is negative, then we shift it to positive. We take the opposite because of the way the test was developed. So uh, uh, from, from here, we know that electricity consumption has a positive impact on GDP. More electricity consumption, more GDP. Then we have this here, the adjustment rate. The ECT here is 0 0.26, means that uh, we have Each year, 26% of discrepancy from a long-run equilibrium is corrected. This adjustment, although is, you can say, moderate, but it is significant. So, uh, uh, here means the adjustment will happen full in four years. Each year, 26, 26, 26, 50, 2, 26, 26. That means become four years minus few days become 100. So one thing that you should note about this, <coughs> this value, it must be minus, negative, and less than 1, which is both of them is correct. Now, uh, how to find the short run uh, causality? I go to uh, Pro, then make system, then order by variable. Okay, so I get this equation. I copy it. I go quick, then estimate equation and paste it here. Then I put OK. So I will have that one. Now we want to see <coughs> or find the causality between dependent variable and independent variable. Causality between electricity consumption and GDP. So uh, we have to check the coefficient. So here we say dependent variable is GDP, independent variable is electricity consumption. So we have to check coefficient of electricity uh, uh, consumption. So here we have C2 GDP, we have C3, right? Only, yeah, C3 LN EC. So we go now to view coefficient diagnostic, world test, and we write C between bracket 3 equal to zero. Let's say, if let's say, we have two coefficients for energy consumption. Let's say like that. <coughs> C3 times D LNC minus one plus C4 times D LNC minus two, for example. Then we have to put C3 equal to C4 and equal to zero. If we have three coefficients for EC, 
then we have to put 3 c3 equal to c4 equal to c5 then equal to 0 so here we have only ones i put only c3 equal to 0 and put okay so the probability is 0 0.3477 therefore it, uh, electricity consumption does not cause gdp but if you want for example to know the opposite now we put dependent variable is electricity consumption and independent variable is gdp and we want to see if gdp cause electricity consumption is same i close this from here i take this now you can see here now ec as dependent variable gdp as independent copy i go to quick estimate equation and paste here then i put ok so i have this now uh, gdp is um, independent variable so we have c5 gdp then we have c6 gdp okay so here i can view coefficient heuristic world test then i put c5 equal to c6 and equal to 0 ah yes so you can see here the probability now is less than 0 0.05 therefore we say that GDP domestic gross product cause electricity consumption as it is significant so you may have here we we, we do illustration for based only on two variables but you may have more than two three four five depend on your model and you can see the causalities between the depend the independent variables and dependent variables one by one or all of them so here we come to the end of this video the next video we'll do uh, in the case where we have a mix or integration between uh, level and first difference or i0 and, 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 and i1 and there where we use ARDL. So in the next video uh, we will going to explain and illustrate ARDL co-integration. Thank you very much. If you have any question or doubt you can uh, uh, write your, your question or your uh, doubt on down on the comments in the YouTube. Thank you very much.